take a look at the screen right now. What you're seeing is the Samsung QN900D Neo QLED 8K TV. And what it is, is going to be just a premium design right off the bat. You can see that there's barely any bezel to this TV at all to be seen. It almost looks like it's just floating there right in front of you. The design is so incredible that I cannot overstate how cool this actually is in person. This is Samsung's Infinity Air design, and this is one of the coolest designs I've seen from a TV thus far. Overall, the design is incredible on the QN900D. But what about the picture quality? Well, before I get into that, I just want you to know that full transparency, Samsung did send this QN900D to me themselves. Although I do not get to keep the TV, I have already sent the TV back and no money exchanged hands. This was just an opportunity for me to get the TV in my hands, be able to say whatever I want to say about it. Samsung does not get to see this review before I publish it, and they don't get any input whatsoever on what I'm saying in this review. I just want to be 100% clear on that so you guys understand what's going on. Now let me tell you what I think about the TV. Hopefully, as you can see on the picture here, HDR is outstanding on this TV, especially full screen brightness with the HDR in mind. These daytime scenes like you're seeing right now are almost unmatched on any other TV. And that even goes for the Bravia 9 sometimes. When it is side by side, there's times where it actually looks brighter than the Bravia 9. The Bravia 9 does seem to be the more capable TV in a lot of other scenes. So they're going to trade blows in that respect. But what the TV does is full screen brightness really well. And it also holds on to color really well. Something that that is definitely an advantage for the QN900D. Now, when it comes down to just how the color is displayed, if you have color booster on even with this, it is looking like some of the best color that I've seen from an LCD TV. But I found that you would have to tweak the color a little bit more than I would normally on a Samsung TV. But once I dialed in the colors a little bit better, I was getting there where I would like to be. Now, out of the box, you may think that there's a little bit of undersaturation going on. So that's why I mentioned this, is that you do want to probably crank up the color just a tad bit on this TV when you first get it. Using Color Booster is a way to achieve this as well. I found really good results with the new Color Booster technology that is built into this TV. It's a new setting that's built into the TV that you should definitely try out. So there's no doubt in my mind the picture quality is really good, but what about the local dimming performance? The local dimming performance on this TV is really good as well. When it comes down to deep blacks, good highlight detail, you are getting a lot of that out of the QN900D. And it really seems like Samsung has delivered on this local dimming algorithm. Now, at times it does feel like it's not as good as something like the Bravia 9, but that is a different backlight system entirely. Although, it will be times where this will actually outshine the Bravia 9 in terms of local dimming just because it does have more zones in general. So that's not always going to be the case where more zones equal better local dimming. But I do have to say that it does a really good job of giving you a great local dimming performance. So the QN900D is rated high in that respect in my eyes. But I can't state enough how impressive this TV is in regards to holding on to color at high brightness levels. Something sometimes you see with TVs is that when you get to higher brightness levels, you start to lose saturation in your colors. I'm not feeling that as much with the QN900D. In fact, I think that it does a really good job. Again, once you dial in the colors a little bit more, you will feel the colors from the TV come alive. Now let's talk about gaming. Gaming is a highlight for this TV. It does gaming incredibly well. Some of the best gaming that I've seen out of an LCD TV thus far. There is no doubt about it, it has one of the best game modes from a mini LED TV and it does a really good job at local dimming in game mode as well as having the ability to really stretch to places where no other TV has gone before, with the ability to do 240Hz gaming at 4K on a PC. I just love that you have the option to do that 
with the QN900D. So if you are looking for a TV for high-end PC gaming, this may be one you want to look at. Testing out the One Connect box that comes with this TV, I had no issues whatsoever with dropouts or anything like that. So you should know that this is a new One Connect design entirely, completely different from the one that you find in the S95D. The design of the One Connect box looks different itself as far as the actual look of the One Connect box goes. As far as connecting it, it's all pretty much going to be the same situation as something like the S95D and the S95C as far as connecting goes. So it is still that one connect design where you just plug in the one wire to the back of the box and then all your ports are going to be on the back of the one connect box. It works really well and I think that this is a solution for a lot of people that are looking to wall mount this TV. I think the one connect box is a really good design all in all. But definitely look into the specs, make sure that wire is long enough for the setup that you want to go with with this TV. So one unique thing about this TV that is really highly boasted from Samsung themselves is the ability to upscale to 8K anything. Pretty much anything gets upscaled to 8K. And I will say that the actual clarity of this TV, the quality of this TV is kind of unmatched when it comes down to the fine details. There is no doubt about it that when you put on 4K content, it does look sharper and more detailed on this TV compared to the other TVs that I have put it next to. Now, I don't know if this is just a algorithm that's in place that is making it look sharper and more detailed, but Samsung does a really good job of edge enhancement on this TV by default. And when you're talking about upscaling movies and TV shows, it does a fantastic job at that as well. So I did put on some 8K footage for this TV and I was judging it to some non-8K footage and the results were pretty good. Admittedly, the 8K footage still looked better in the native form on the QN900D, which proves that I could see the difference between 8K and 4K. Although you do really have to be close to the TV to see these fine detail differences. Some of the best native sharpness that I'm getting out of a TV is coming from the QN900D. So without a doubt, I would say that one of the strengths of the TVs is this NQ8 Gen 3 AI processor. And it really does make details appear clearer and sharper than I have seen from other Samsung LCD TVs in the past. So without a doubt, this is Samsung's best processor that they have done thus far. All right, now I really want to talk about some of the cool features in this TV like AI and the motion enhancement. But first, if you guys are in the market for buying a TV, when you finally decide on the TV that you're buying, when you buy it, if you could, please consider buying it on one of my affiliate links in the description below. Thank you guys so much for your support. The TV also has a lot of cool AI features. One of the things that they have is AI customization for the AI picture mode. And it really is going to be something you can kind of customize. This is very similar to what I seen on LG's Picture Wizard, but it is somewhat different. So you can go to the AI customization and then kind of pick what you would think is your preference based on what you're seeing from the sample images they're giving you, similar to what you see on the LG. When you do this, it will dial in the picture to a color temperature that's similar to what you picked and also just a sharpness level and a brightness level similar to what you picked. So it's really interesting how it works. Give it a shot. I think it's going to hit with some people better than others. And it's just kind of going to be something that you're going to like if you like preference settings more so. Or if you're somebody who's more of a purist, you probably won't use this. But a lot of the advertised features were really tied into these AI picture modes. So definitely give it a shot and see if you like it. There's a lot of cool AI customization going on. It was hard to actually replicate what I was getting from these AI picture modes by just trying to like make my own settings for example so definitely give it a shot it's not going to be for everybody but I do have a feeling that some people are going to really love it another thing they have with the AI is going to be the motion tracking so the motion tracking on this TV with sports in mind is really good to be honest with you I haven't had any issues tracking the ball with motion in mind Unfortunately, I won't be able to display the sports content in question here because of copyright, but 
I'll just tell you that I was really impressed with the performance of motion during sports content. So I didn't see any downsides to motion at all when watching sports on this TV. It did a really good job at eliminating blur that you normally see with sports in mind. Okay, so there's definitely a lot of great things to say about this TV, and there's going to be some downsides, especially if you experience some dirty screen effect with your TV. That's something that will vary from unit to unit based on any LCD TV you buy. That's just something I have to throw out there because it's not going to be something that will affect everybody, but some people will feel it more than others. No matter what LCD TV you buy, we could be talking about the Bravia 9. I have dirty screen effect on that as well, and this QN900D had some dirty screen effect on it, full transparency. So yeah, no matter what LCD TV you buy, you may run into that screen uniformity issue, so that could be one of the cons. Now, another con is definitely going to be the price tag. The price tag is a tough one because I don't know that it's fair to dock a TV for its price because it will come down in price eventually. And right now, when you look at the value that you get out of the TV, it does feel like the 8K models are just a little bit too much in terms of the price tag. Relative to the competition that's out there, you kind of have to look at that when it comes down to the big picture. And that's the biggest hurdle that I have with the QN900D is, yeah, it's one of the best TVs on the market when it comes down to full screen brightness. There's no doubt about it. Like, it's hard to find full screen brightness this good, but you will have to pay up for it. If you want a K, maybe for your workflow, or maybe you're a PC gamer, you want those extra gaming features, then it is a little bit easier to justify. But it is still very expensive. There's no doubt about it, right? So that has to be one of the cons when we're reviewing the TV. That's where I'm left with this review. Is I love this TV, but dang, is it expensive. So yeah, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear your answer. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.